In this video, we review Microsoft Directory services, including Enter ID, Enter Domain Services, and Windows AD. One of my all-time top performing videos explains the difference between Windows Active Directory, Azure AD, and Azure AD Domain Services. Microsoft recently renamed Azure AD and other cloud-based identity services to Entra. In this video, we go over the name change and the difference between these services. Before that, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365 with Intune Management, and a topic relevant to this video, hybrid identities with Windows AD and Azure AD, now Enter ID on udemy.com. Links are below, and thank you channel members, your support is appreciated. Back to it, let's start with the rename. If you haven't heard by now, Azure AD is now Microsoft Enter ID. Microsoft changed the name to better communicate the functionality of the product, limit confusion with Windows AD, and unify the Microsoft Enter product line. And that makes sense. Microsoft has three broad categories of cloud services. The Software as a Service, or SaaS, Microsoft 365 products, like Teams, SharePoint, Power Platform, and Exchange Online. These services are licensed per user. We pay a license fee per user, no matter how often they use the service. Then we have Azure services. These include Azure subscriptions that contain Platform as a Service, or PaaS, and Infrastructure as a Service, or IaaS products. These services are billed based on consumption. If we need a VM to run an application for a week, we simply spin it up and pay for it while it's running. It's the same price if one user or 100 users log into the application. The common theme between these two is the identity service that contains users, groups, devices, and other security principles. Microsoft Enter ID, previously Azure AD, is the service that manages access to Microsoft 365 SaaS and Azure PaaS and IaaS services. An instance of Enter ID is sometimes called a tenant. An organization can have multiple tenants, maybe due to mergers and acquisitions. Every organization that uses Microsoft's cloud services has at least one Enter ID tenant. The name change is just that, a change in the name. There are no features or functional changes and no service interruptions due to the name change. APIs, URLs, and PowerShell commands are still the same. On the screen is a list of name changes. The change is not limited to Azure AD. Azure AD Domain Services is now Microsoft Entra Domain Services. Azure AD Connect Sync is now Microsoft Entra Connect Sync. And Azure AD Conditional Access is Microsoft Entra Conditional Access. These are just a few examples, but you get the point. Just about all Azure AD names have switched to Microsoft Entra. As a side note, officially it's Microsoft Enter ID. I'm going with Enter ID for the rest of this video for brevity. Now that we know about the name change, let's dig into three directory services. Windows Server Active Directory, Entra ID, and Entra Domain Services. We'll start with Windows AD. Windows AD is over 20 years old. It supports a hierarchical directory, an extensible schema. It stores security objects like users and computers. It supports group policies. It's highly available in a multi-master configuration. It does require dedicated servers as domain controllers. It supports standards like LDAP and DNS and uses Kerberos and NTLM for authentication. This is the Active Directory many organizations have used for the past 22 or more years. But that's the problem. Authentication looked a lot different back then and had to address use cases relevant to that time. For example, the common network scenario Windows 80 was built for included a well-defined perimeter network with a firewall blocking all inbound and outbound traffic. Users logged in from company-owned Windows clients inside the private network and accessed resources behind the firewall. All internet traffic was secured with that firewall. If the users had to connect from a remote location, they would use a VPN to extend that private network. The problem is, in the current IT landscape, users don't always access resources from inside the network. They may work from home or other places, and the access may be from non-Windows devices that the company does not manage. The resources have changed also. Company resources are moving to the cloud and can be accessed from anywhere. Kerberos and NTLM were created with a well-defined private network in mind and were not intended to be used over the public internet. That brings us to Zero Trust. Zero Trust was developed to address modern authentication problems, including securely authenticating over the public internet. Microsoft's implementation of Zero Trust has a set of guiding principles. 
The first is verify explicitly. Continuously authenticate and authorize users no matter where they're located. Treat everyone the same. Don't trust them. This is unlike Kerberos where tokens generated at login and that same token is used for the rest of the session. Next, use the theory of least privileges, including just in time and just enough access policies. Let people do what they need and limit that access to when they need it. And finally, assume there will be a breach. Take the steps you would if there was a breach before it happens. Limit the blast radius, segment access with end-to-end -end encryption, enable data collection and analytics to detect and analyze a breach. This is important. We don't want to wait until there was a breach before implementing analytics that would help us identify the impact. That brings us to Enter ID. Enter ID is hosted by Microsoft. We have no servers to deploy or manage. It's a flat architecture that's not extendable. Enter ID does not support group policies. There are three tiers, Enter ID Free, P1, and P2, and it uses OAuth 2, SAML, and OpenID Connect for authentication. This is an important distinction. These protocols are built for the web and support the Zero Trust framework. They don't require an isolated private network. Enter ID does not support NTLM and has very limited support for Kerberos. Now that we've reviewed Windows AD and Enter ID, let's talk about hybrid identities. First, we have Windows AD, the on-premises directory service that holds users, groups, computers, and other security principles. Then we have Enter ID, the cloud-based directory that also holds users, groups, computers, and other security principles. Left this way, our users would need to sign in once to access on-prem resources and again for web-based resources. That won't work for most organizations. What we need is a way to synchronize users, groups, and computers from Windows AD to Enter ID. That's what Entra Connect Sync is for. It's a service that synchronizes identities from Windows AD to Entra ID and supports single sign-on, so users only have to remember one set of credentials to access on-prem and cloud services. We covered Windows AD and Entra ID. How does Entra Domain Services fit in? Entra Domain Services is a Windows AD compatible service managed by Microsoft. There are no domain controllers to manage or update. It's a unique namespace, meaning it's a different domain from Entra ID. It integrates with Entra ID and supports Kerberos, LDAP, and NTLM. We can join computers to Entra Domain Services and then apply group policies. There are some limitations, including no support for a two-way trust. Entra Domain Services was not intended to replace Windows AD, and although it's compatible with Windows AD, has some limitations that should be considered before using it. I have an entire blog post on this topic. I'll leave a link to that below. In the end, we can use all three. Identities in Windows AD can synchronize to Entra ID with Entra Connect Sync. We can also create identities in Entra ID. Users in Entra ID can then replicate to Entra Domain Services. It's also possible to create identities in Entra Domain Services. Note that this is a one-way synchronization. It doesn't work in the other direction. On the screen is a feature comparison. We can extend Windows AD to Azure with a Windows IaaS server or stand up a new domain in Azure. Also, a significant difference is the authentication protocol support. Windows AD and Entra Domain Services are intended for legacy Kerberos and NTLM. Entra ID supports modern OAuth 2, SAML, and OpenID Connect protocols. That was a lot of information, but it's worth understanding the differences between the three different directory services. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.